we got a big weekend coming up with UFC 300 right around the corner. We have matchups set to make history in the octagon. This is one you do not want to miss. I've teamed up with DraftKings Sportsbook and we're gonna bring you closer to the action. Right now, all new customers who bet just $5 will get $150 in bonus bets instantly. Download the DraftKings app right now. Sign up using my code SUNNY. DraftKings, the crown is yours. Stay in on the action and use your bets for DraftKings same game parlays for a shot at an even bigger payout. Combine multiple bets together from the same fight, including total rounds and method of victory. If sports betting is not yet available in your state, you can still join in on all the fun with DraftKings Daily Fantasy and have the shot to win bigger prizes. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app right now. New customers sign up using the promo code SUNNEN. Bet just $5 and you will get 150 in bonus bets instantly. That's promo code SUNNEN only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Oh, we are getting close, guys. This is going down. I got asked a question, which is, and I want to pose it back to you guys, but what fight are you most looking forward to? And generally speaking, it would be the main event, but not always. I believe it was Errol Hawani who coined the phrase people's main event. And there is a people's main event, and it's not always the last match. It looks as though Max and Justin have stolen that title, people's main event. But is that the one you want to see the most? Like, if I was to ask you what fighter on this card is most likely to fight for a title before they're done, if I was to ask you who's most likely to be champion before they're done, if I was to ask you what fighter on this card is most likely to go into the Hall of Fame, because there's a bunch, I think you'd have a hard time answering that. And do you want to know what my answer is, the one I want to see? And what fighter on this card is most guaranteed locked for the Hall of Fame? Holly Holm. Now, it's a fight, so of course, Kayla Harrison, but how many times have we counted Holly out? Like, did any of you believe that Holly could win this fight? From the time that it was announced, I remember where I was when this got announced. And it's just one of those fights, one of those fights that grabs you. You go, what? My very first thought is, at 135 pounds, that can't be right. And I was reading this on a doc. I said, that's got to be a misprint. Kayla Harrison's weighed 145 in her fight career. She went over to Invicta to do it. But before she did it, she did an interview. She did an interview like three years ago. And I still remember it because she said she hasn't weighed 145 pounds since she was 17 years old. A junior in high school. That's a quote. So when I hear 135, oh, that can't be right. And I know that Holly is willing to go up and it's a special night and it's 300 and they're not they're not reviving the 145 pound division, but this fight is going to be at 145. Had it all wrong. Kayla's going down. Kayla said that she's going to do a test cut. Now, Kayla looks like she's carved out of stone as is. Like there is nothing but muscle. Very lean. That's at 155 pounds. As a matter of fact, that's the only time I've ever seen her. I never saw her in Victor fight where she weighed 145. So for me, I've only seen her at 155, and I only saw her judo matches, which were 170. I'm going to see her at 135 for the first time. I am very much looking forward to that. And there's a reason we face them off, right? That marketing, that, that expression, a picture is worth a thousand words, that is why we face them off. How is this person doing? What is their level of fitness? Is it too much? Can they recover? Now, I, I got to just get in front of that right now because you will hear commentators and you will hear that all week of, oh, I don't know if she can recover and her legs are going to be weak. Please stop. N none of that is true. When you weigh in on a Friday and you fight on a Saturday, it, it, it just isn't true. To, to put this in, in wrestling standpoints for you, which was around 150 years before MMA, and I get that this is new, but they'll do what's called an hour weigh-in. They will weigh them in, and one hour later, you are on the mat. In a tournament, they'll do what's called a two-hour weigh-in. Now, I know there's significant differences. I've done them both. But 
in a 24 hour situation where you do it on a Friday, I mean, you, you get a meal, you get a recovery, you get a workout, you get a full night's sleep. Now you repeat that, you get another meal, another nap, another recovery. I mean, I'm just sharing for you. There is absolutely nothing valid about it. But the reason I am looking at the way in is, is she going to make it? That is valid. Kayla had claimed to the media that she had done a test cut. Now, she did not do a test cut. Just so you understand, that is that is fiction. Unless I don't know the definition of test cut. That is very possible. When I hear test cut, I assume as a test, she cut down to 135 pounds. That might not be what she meant. She might mean, hey, I pulled some weight. I knew my body well enough to know if I pulled the water out, I could make 135. This is how I felt. I don't know what she meant by it. And I don't bring it up as a way of calling BS on a story. I bring it up so that you don't miss the drama of the story. This is going to be a very long and a very difficult week. And we're going to see Kayla. We're going to see her at press conferences. We're going to see what her energy is like and how she is talking. It's very fascinating. And then once she gets there, the make-believe that she's going to have her way with Holly Holm. Oh, my God. You know how many other women have thought they were going to have their way with Holly Holm? And Holly's actually the first. I remember when Holly came over to the sport. I mean, you could go all the way back to like Marie Smith, but I remember when Holly came to the sport, she was going to go right into Ronda and Ronda was a Olympic medalist in, in a grappling. And this was established all the way back in 1993. You put a striker against a grappler. There's simply nothing to see here. She was a 17 time world boxing and kickboxing champion. I was caught out. I said, man, those belts aren't real. There's no validity. Her motor's putting those up at the end of the night. And they asked her about it. And Holly said, yeah, Chael's right. I agree with him. I'm, I need to beat Ronda. I need, th this will be my world championship. And she did it. A lot of good straights. And then that high head kick felt around the world. And at the time she did it, it was like a big upset. It was like when Maurice Smith did that to Mark Coleman. If you guys have been around that long and you remember, it was a very similar feel in that, hey, great job. This is what dreams are made of. You couldn't do that again. And anybody that's choosing to watch this and tries to copy you isn't going to have success either. Well, when I say Holly was first, she really was. I mean, Holly got that done before Israel Adesanya, before he came over and started using kickboxing skills, took that to an MMA title. Holly got that done as a 17-time boxing and kickboxing champion long before Alex Pejera came over. I think that you got to put Francis in that category. He said he wanted to be a boxer. Then he goes out and boxes, and we see that boxing says, I mean, does he go into that category? Does he not have enough of a background as a striker? Fair enough, but Surreal Gone did. Surreal Gone was like seven, uh, 27 and 2. If I'm wrong, it was 29 and three. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm right in there. That might've been out of Sonia's record. The point is these kickboxers really started to come over. And if you follow that story and you talk to experts, they'll all give the credit to Ada Sonia. They'll all say that he was the one that showed and opened the doors, but that's not quite the way it happened. The one that changed the game, the one that did it first, the one that took those skills and said, I can make this work. Because they were willing to put in the work. The first to do it was Holly Holm. 